Hello everybody and welcome back to the Zodcast. Sorry it's been a while since I've done an upload, but I didn't want to let this day go by without congratulating David Rancheck for solving the Zodiac 340 cipher. It's a big day in Zodiac world and I just did not want to not do a upload to congratulate David on that big breakthrough. Of course it was David and his team uh breaking that cipher and uh the fbi confirmed it and everybody seems to agree with it looks good to me for sure uh and a guy like david man the guy knows his stuff he's not going to put out anything that he's not 100 percent uh right about and uh, no one's even really fighting this other than probably a few loon looney tunes on his uh youtube message boards after he uploaded a video about it i'm sure he knew about it a few days ago but he put together a video and put it out this morning so uh great work david man that's awesome it's really good for the whole zodiac community when uh, somebody accomplishes something big like that i mean it's gone on gone on solved for 51 years and a lot of people thought maybe that cipher was just gibberish or just or, or completely unbreakable without the uh without the cipher key but uh you know a guy like david is tenacious he's going to stay on it and uh got it done so uh and of course what does that cipher say i'll go ahead and read it real quick so now let me read the uh, transcribe 340 I hope you are having lots of fun and trying to catch me. That wasn't me on the TV show, which brings up a point about me. I am not afraid of the gas chamber because it will send me to paradise all the sooner because I now have enough slaves to work for me where everyone else has nothing when they reach paradise. So they are afraid of death. I am not afraid because I know that my new life is life will be an easy one in paradise death. So there you have it, the uh, finally deciphered 340 from the Zodiac Killer. That is so great that he did that. And, of course, that's so in line with, with uh, you know, the first cipher that was, of course, broken by uh, Donald Gene Harden. But here comes uh, David Rancheck now behind him as, a, as an official breaker of one of the Zodiac's infamous codes and one thing that i'll add about this and i'd love to i'd love it would if david would comment and david if you're listening to this show it would be a huge honor if you would just drop a couple of zodiac symbols or something in the comment section i would be forever honored but i would love to know if you're listening uh what level of intellect or knowledge of math and or ciphers would you have to have to to uh to have created the 340 because what i understand is and i've always said on this channel i'm not a cipher guy like david but uh it was definitely from what i understand a lot harder to break than of course the one that donald harden did which was a simple substitution cipher this one was much more complicated which tells you that the Zodiac Killer had a pretty good knowledge of mathematics, I would think, and, and, and being able to do these ciphers. So it's not just some guy that picked up a single book and was able to do it. I think he had to work on it for a while. Because look how long it took these smart people like David to break it. So obviously, I think that bodes well for Don because he was a mechanical engineer, of course. So I'm always going to go back to that. Uh, would it have been great if this uh, you know popped out the Zodiac's name? Of course it would. Even if it was Arthur Lee Allen, of course, that would be nice because if if uh, don was going to hide a name it would be arthur lee allen of course so um you know unfortunately it didn't do that a lot of people didn't expect it to be that way but it wasn't gibberish it was a a message and david found it with his team so that's that's great it's just such such good stuff for the zodiac community so um i wanted to do one quick mailbag actually two there was a guy and i'd have to go back because sometimes people put comments under videos I did a long time ago. So it doesn't even come up and, and tell me that there's a message there on, you know, because there's so many. I've done quite a few videos now. And um, a former police officer, I believe in the Bay Area, left me a comment about uh, the, the thing that I mentioned about the other law enforcement officer I talked to a while back that was in the Bay Area about this whole story of Larry Kane and um, Harvey Hines, who's, of course, the police officer that brought forward Larry Kane as a Zodiac suspect. And this guy was basically saying what I said, what, that, to his knowledge, uh, was absolutely correct about how so many law enforcement officers absolutely disliked Harvey Hines. And uh, so that turned out to be true. And I want that guy to also let me know if he knows that if you ever brought up the name Donald Lee Cheney to Harvey Hines, he got extremely defensive. And I don't know why. And I've never found a link to Don Cheney and Harvey Hines. But it's interesting that this guy's backing it up. And he also said that uh, 
that he loved my stuff and he did and as an law enforcement officer and the other one said this to me as well they don't believe in coincidences like that and obviously there are going to be some in the zodiac with so many things and so many years that have gone by but you know when you go to the uh Paul Avery going to the same college as Don Chaney and the Mikado being done all in 1953. That's just, you know, it's a, a coincidence just those two guys would be at that little junior college in 53. But when you throw on the Mikado, it's too much. So uh, the guy was agreeing with that. That's just too much of a uh, of a coincidence not to be tied into these murders of the Zodiac Killer. So um, I really appreciated that guy's comment. And the uh, second uh, message from the mailbag I want to read is from uh, Zod Squad member Sarah. And she says, Hi Drew, just a quick few things, big fan of the videos, very balanced approach. First, you said that Cheney was in the Air Force at Treasure Island. The connection being the Charlie Chan at Treasure Island movie with Dr. Zodiac. Thought that was interesting. Uh, that's the first part. Uh, I never said that Cheney was at Treasure Island. He was actually at Harlingen Air Force Base in Texas. Um, but there is a, a, a Charlie Chan, of course, Zodiac connection going on there. So uh, you might have heard that somewhere else, Sarah. But uh, Cheney was actually, uh, when he was in the Air Force in Harlingen, Texas, at the, uh, the uh, Air Force Training Academy there in Harlingen. But then she goes on to make another point here that I thought was really good. It says, uh, second point is that you have stated that Cheney would have known Paul Avery. If you were to throw somebody off the scent, you would definitely send a letter to somebody you knew and misspell their name, Averly. Uh, that's true. If, if he did, and of course, he uh, the Zodiac referred to Paul Avery as uh, his secret pal in the Halloween card. And I pointed one time, maybe he was trying to throw a reference out to Arthur Lee Allen or himself. Donald Lee Cheney was Don's middle name was Lee. So obviously when you have Averly, A-V-E-R-L-Y, you get Lee, you know, instead of Avery, it's Aver Lee. So uh, I always thought that it was interesting and I talked that about that before. And then uh, Sarah has a third point. It says, uh, everybody goes on about handwriting experts and people using left hand as a second form of verification being as a trained drafts person. She will put forward the idea that there is a third uh, verification being uh, the use of drafting pens. If you learn to use drafting pens, it's a whole new way of writing and is a skill as the pens are held completely different to the normal ballpoint pens as the draft pen needs to be held at a zero degree angle to flow. Also within a drafting environment, um, e.g. mapping, you have to learn a set font and set numbers to unify any map drawn and being universally known. That style of training and pen use could easily disguise your left or righting hand with a normal ballpoint pen. I was led to this idea by my own personal experience and expertise within the trade of draftsmanship. If you'd like to give me a shout out to Sarah and Dad, both love the videos. Well, thank you for sending that, Sarah. You, you, you uh, definitely know the things that I like to hear more about, and that is drafting and how the Zodiac did his ciphers that were so clean, they were so precise, and we've talked about that on this channel before because uh, obviously the Zodiac used a drafting table or a light table where he'd laid uh, graph paper under the piece of paper he was writing the symbols out on so they'd be all uniformly neat, both vertically and horizontally. And, uh, you know, the, and the strokes are so nice on those Zodiac symbols. Then you look at the handwriting of the Zodiac Killer and it looks like absolute crap. Uh, but it's really interesting what you're saying there about the, the, the drafting because Don Chaney could absolutely draft. He admitted he could draft. He was a pipe stress analyst uh, before AutoCAD was being used where they were trained how to use a, a drafting pen which had a nib on it. Uh, which distributed the ink and they could use different size nibs and I talked a lot about that on a video What was that? Uh, I think two episodes ago. So uh, really appreciate that uh, So definitely shout out to uh, Sarah and her dad. I hope you're listening to this Because uh, I love that comment about about that. Uh, so yeah going back Don was actually in Harlingen, but uh, you definitely made up for it with that comment about the the uh, him, the drafting because uh, the Zodiac to me and I've, I've talked to other people that, that draft and they say yeah this looks like someone that had drafting experience they did this also when you look at the uh, Zodiac bust bomb diagram that just looks like something an engineer would do it's it's uh, the way it's laid out it's a ortho the using orthographic projection of course so uh, something an engineer would do so that's that so I really appreciate it and I know when I left off on the last 
Zodcast, we were talking about the uh, interview that Tom Voigt did with Don Chaney and the things that Don would say that were so mysterious in that interview where he's pretty much kind of telling you who he is. And uh, this isn't just some old guy. Like so many people think, oh, Don Chaney's just... Uh, just an old guy trying to be relevant or something like that. No, there's a whole lot more to Don Chaney, and there was a whole lot more back in the day um, in terms of what he could do. Not just being able to sew that well, but being an avid big game hunter and the most dangerous game tie-in and all that. So anyway, going back to handwriting, here's the part where Tom Voigt is asking Don about uh, Arthur Lee Allen being ampedestrous because that's how a lot of the people when when Arthur Lee Allen's handwriting didn't match up to the Zodiac letter writing they thought well he could write with both hands he must have written the letters with his right hand because he was dominant left and uh, you know there's just one theory they had out there so this is Tom says did Allen ever demonstrate any of uh, being ampedestrous in any way writing with either hand shooting or question mark so that's smart of Tom Voigt to ask if uh, Arthur Lee Allen could shoot with his left hand, because it it, it appears that um, you know the Zodiac was right-handed. If you look at Lake Berryessa and the knife attack, I mean, that was clearly done by a right-handed person. And then we talked about the Paul Stein uh, killing at the Presidio, where it looks like the Zodiac shot Paul Stein in the back of the head with with his right hand, just the way it was positioned. Uh, looks pretty much like the, the Zodiac killer at the Presidio was in the back seat. They don't know that for absolute certainty. But that's that's the way it looks. So it definitely looks like a right-hand attacker at both uh, Berryessa and at the Presidio. But anyway, Don's response to Tom asking about Alan demonstrating being able to use uh, either hand, he says, yeah, he was ampedestrous. He could write with either hand, and I suppose other things as well as writing. That was Don's response because Don knows that the Zodiac Killer was right-handed. And Arthur Lee Allen really wasn't that ampedestrous. He could do some writing with his right hand just because the teachers tried to force him to do that because being a left-handed was a scourge back in the day. Uh, Arthur Lee Allen was really a left-handed person, which goes way against him as being the Zodiac, mainly because the final two crimes, of course. So that's that's smart. So you see Don kind of filling it in there, uh, kind of playing along because he has to explain why the Zodiacs are right-handed because he knows the Zodiac was right-handed. Uh, and then Tom says, have you seen him write with both hands, question mark? And Don says, oh yeah, I knew he could. Tom says, "Did uh, which did he prefer to write with, which hand? And Don says, left. So at least he's admitting that, Don Chaney is. He said he was dominantly left-handed, but he could use his right hand. Tom Voigt, what would be the circumstances where he'd use his right hand, question mark? Don Chaney, well, when he was in school, they made him. Tom Voigt, right. But when you knew him, I mean, why wouldn't he just write everything with his left? Question mark. Don says, I can't think of a reason now, but uh, I didn't know that that was the case. See, here's Don trying to cover his tracks again. You know, this is all laid out so perfectly because Don knows that Arthur Lee Allen's predominantly left and the Zodiac was right-handed. He's thinking of everything. And then Tom says, did you ever notice a difference, a major difference in the way his handwriting appeared from left to right hand? Question mark. Don Chaney replies, I can't remember how his handwriting was. Tom says, so he could, definitely. He was ampedestrous, question mark. So you see Tom pushing it. And Don says, oh yeah, Tom, did you ever see him shoot with both hands that you remember? Don said, no. Um, then Tom Voigt comes back. Did Lee ever... How many friends did he have? A lot of friends. Or was he somebody that was a loner type? And then Don says, I met some people that were his friends, Eric Tucker, blah, blah, blah. So he kind of kind of moves on from that whole questioning over uh, over the, the right left hand deal. But do you see, you know, Cheney kind of trying to fill that in? He's kind of dancing around again, just like the date of uh, January 1st, 1969. Remember, that was the first mistake Don Cheney made was uh, not covering the fact that uh, Arthur Leon had already been fired from Valley Springs. That's the first mistake. We talk about that a lot. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on to another part of that um, interview that Voigt did with Cheney. And Tom says, do you remember him ever being violent? And Don Cheney says, no. Tom, just the incident where he kicked in the door, I guess. Of course, they're talking about the, you know, uh, Ralph Spinelli. And Don says, yeah, I heard about that. Tom, did he ever talk about anything else or did you ever see anything else? Don, well, uh, what he talked about. Why would he present himself as being the macho guy? So uh, he didn't want to appear to be a weakling or a retiring type. He was aggressive and, you know, to that point. 
Tom, right. Did Lee have an interest in astrology? Don says, I don't think so. I don't know. Tom, you don't remember anything like that then? And Don says, astrology is something that uh, I don't think would have appealed to him all that much as far as being a follower of the, you know, believing in astrology. Tom, so you don't remember him ever talking about it. Don, it wasn't an interest. Tom, how about the opera? Don, he liked music. Tom says, like the Mikado or Gilbert, Gilbert and Sullivan type music, of course, because the Zodiac always quoted from the Mikado. Don says, something like that, maybe. I, uh, and then Tom says, nothing specific, though, that you remember? Tom, uh, Don Chaney says, I don't remember specifically what it was he liked, but um, I think he liked the symphony or opera. I did at the time. So uh, there's Don kind of like wanting to be associated with the opera or things like the Mikado. And I'll do just one last example from this interview. And I'm going to do another upload on the on the rest of this. Because there's so much in this interview that Tom did with Don Chaney. It's so great that he that he did that. And if, if Tom Voigt still has that recording, man, I would love to hear it. Just want to hear it. Uh, it's great that he put the transcript, though. So thank God we have it. But uh, So this moves on. And they're talking about the wristwatch again. The Zodiac model wristwatch. And... Uh, Don's answering something to Tom. He says, well, I think he was, he was into kind of resented the present. He's talking about getting the watch for, for Christmas. Of course, Don screwed up and said that was for Christmas 68, wound up being uh, Christmas 67. Again, that's Don's first big mistake. Tom says, so was it this Christmas that was a few days earlier, Christmas of 68? And then Don says, uh, yeah, so that's not true. Because Don just said, yeah, it was 68 that Arthur Lee Allen got that wristwatch, meaning uh, a whole full, a full year later that we know that he got that watch because his brother, Arthur Lee Allen's brother, Ron Allen, confirmed that he got an identical watch for Christmas 67. So there's Don caught in an outright lie right there. So anyway, this moves on. Tom, uh, Tom Voigt. And they gave it. And so his parents, was it his parents that gave him the watch, Don Chaney? His parents or his mother? I think his parents together. And it was the watch with the circle logo on it. Tom Voigt. And so he showed you the watch. Don Chaney. He showed it to me. He wanted my opinion about the watch. Was it a good watch? I thought it was good enough. It was a good Swiss movement. And you know, there was nothing wrong with it. Tom. And what was the name on the watch? Don Chaney. Zodiac. Tom. And do you remember what the logo on the, you know, dot, 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 just kind of trails off. And Don Chaney comes in with, it was the circle with the four points of the compass. That is my absolute best, uh, in my opinion, giveaway of Don Chaney in this entire interview. When he relates the Zodiac logo from the Zodiac wristwatch to the points of a compass. Because that takes you immediately to the Zodiac's Mount Diablo map. Where the Zodiac killer turned the uh, the Zodiac symbol into a compass. With the, you know, with, with the uh, degrees on it and everything. And it was clearly a compass. So for Don to say that, the, the watch manufacturer never intended that to be a compass. It doesn't even look, it has points on it, but it's not a compass. A compass has several points. The, the uh, Zodiac logo only has four. Uh, so for Don to say that, that is a massive giveaway. So I, I, that's just the, the biggest giveaway to me in this whole interview that points to, uh, to Don Chaney. And, you know, I'm always thinking about this, you know, so Don is the Zodiac, which I believe, of course, if anyone that follows my work and read my book, Sighting In on the Zodiac Killer. So that'll wrap up this abbreviate episode of the Zodcast, and I promise I'll do a longer one soon. Just been really busy finishing up the book on the Yuba County Five. I just did an interview over at uh, Paranormal Zone TV with Noreen, uh, if you're familiar with that channel. It was a really good interview. We had a few technical problems at the beginning, but uh, after it was done, she edited the video, and it's great. So I'm going to put a link to that in there if you're interested in the Yuba County 5 case. Also, that book will be available tomorrow on Amazon for the first day, available tomorrow for uh, the book about the Yuba County 5. It's called Out of Bounds, What Happened to the Yuba County 5 on Amazon. Of course, my book, Sighting in on the Zodiac Killer, is available on Amazon as well. Um, so that's what's going on. I'm also working on a D.B. Cooper project that could be really, really big. So uh, thank you to everybody that's subscribing. Um, if there's anybody that hasn't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Got some, have a lot of new content coming soon. Thank you and good night.